Welcome to Understanding Wildfire with Professor Monks. Today's topic, Fire History, Part 1. Our next topic is the history of fire, how fires and the way people use and manage them have changed over time. To do that, we should think about how we learn about our past. Since we can't hop in a time machine, what sources of information do we have about past fires? For recent times, the last half century or so, we have a lot of really detailed information about fire. Starting with the launch of the first Landsat satellite in 1972, we have a detailed record of our Earth's entire surface. Satellites like Landsat circle the globe, taking pictures of both the visible light coming off the Earth as well as the heat energy being released. We can use visual and heat information together to reconstruct the size and frequency of fires anywhere on Earth. Stretching back to the beginning of the 1900s, we have systematic records of fire kept by agencies like the U.S. Forest Service. These records document the size and timing of fires, much like satellite data, though they're usually less exact and may miss small fires of those occurring deep in the wilderness. To look at times before systematic records, we can turn to other kinds of written records. Local newspapers gave coverage of significant fires in their area, and people who kept diaries would note the presence of fires in areas where they lived. Going back even further, early European explorers noted fires in their journals. There's been much debate, for example, about how to interpret the smokes that Captain Cook observed as he sailed up the east coast of Australia. In addition to written records, we can also turn to oral histories and traditions, especially those maintained by indigenous people. These record both significant individual fires, as well as typical patterns of how fire was managed in the past. Outside of records kept by people, we can also use archaeological and paleontological techniques to learn about fires in the past. One approach involves examining tree rings. The seasonal cycle of growth and dormancy experienced by trees leaves a pattern in rings in their wood, one for each year. Rings are thicker or thinner depending on growing conditions that year. When a fire damages but does not kill a tree, we can determine the date of that fire by looking at which is the outermost ring that contains part of the fire scar. Because the pattern of thick and thin rings is similar in all trees from an area, we can line up different trees some of which died a long time ago, to create a series, extending our data into the past. Tree ring records can stretch back centuries in some cases. Another common technique is to use sediment cores. When there's a pond or a lake, sediment will wash down from the land around it and get deposited on the bottom. The sediment layer will have the oldest material at the bottom, then younger material on top of that, then even younger material on top of that, and so on. Mixed into the sediment, will be pollen from whatever plants are growing in the area, and little bits of charcoal if a fire has burned. Scientists can use a drill to extract a core, a cylinder of sediment, and then under a microscope, count up and weigh the pollen and charcoal in each layer. The results are less exact because sediment from a large area gets mixed all together, but sediment cores can produce records going back hundreds of thousands of years. As an example, here's a sediment core from Sasquatch Lake in British Columbia, Canada. We can see a major increase in fire over the last couple hundred years, which coincides with the period of white settlement in this area. On a longer time scale, we see a general decrease in the amount of pollen from alder and birch and an increase in hemlock, showing a shift in the composition of the forest. During this period, the total charcoal is generally going down, but with periodic high fire times. These changes could be the result of cultural or economic changes in indigenous societies that lived here, or changes in the climate of the area.